I'd like to welcome everyone to the regular scheduled council meeting for April 6, 2020 at 7 p.m. at the Shelter House. Um, call to order. Mayor Lowry? Here. Councilwoman Hopkins? Here. Councilman Grimm? Here. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Here. Councilwoman Eggleston? Here. Councilman Cobb? Here. Vice Mayor Cook? Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be by Councilwoman Hopkins. Dear Heavenly Father, please help us help the city through this coronavirus and help all our families and the citizens of New Carlisle and all our first responders. Amen. In the porch. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. All right, we'll need action on the uh, minutes for the council meeting of March 16, 2020. Yes. Council, any discussion? And when you're ready for the vote, please. All right. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Sustained. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Abstain. Councilman Hopkins. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Minutes accepted, 502. Thank you very much. Communications none. City Manager's report. Mr. Bridge, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. It's really good to see everyone in one room and healthy. Uh, thank you, everyone, for showing up. Before the record, as I explained earlier, the reason why we're here today is because we were trying to locate the best use uh, device to allow for our remote meetings. Uh, that we found one that will work for what we, how we want to do it. We will be using Zoom. Uh, there will be a at the public and the will supply an email address for people to email questions in there. Uh, so with that being said, I kind of want to run this how I did with the last meeting for city manager report. Any questions over the finance, the service, or the fire report, I'd gladly take them. Can answer them. I will. If not, I can answer with the respective department head. To get back. Does council have any questions on the finance service or fire report? I'm going to get to the informational items here. Tonight. So, any questions on those three departments you said? Yes, sir. Council, any questions or comments for those departments? I've just got a handful. I'm not going to get into them tonight. But I mean, I, you know, we've been talking about the water tower, but we can get into that later. No big rush. Yeah, absolutely. And you feel free to email me, and I can email the respective department head as well. Uh, so with that being said, I will continue on to city manager report under informational items. Uh, we are getting a quote. Uh, he's actually working on that quote today to sanitize all our city buildings. That is going to be our shelter house where we're at right now. Fire station, police substation, our city building. It also may include the water department and the wastewater department, where we have to see if those chemicals are being used in those types of facilities on the uh, But we are looking into this. Uh, once we have that solid number, I'll, I'll shoot email, uh, a group email out to council for informational only. Uh, but I think it's something definitely that we are going to go with uh, just to keep our employees safe and also keep this place uh, clean as well. Um, something new I did, and I, I sent it out to council. I hope you guys like it. We've got some really good re uh, responses on it. This is our utility bills newsletter. This is something that I created. Um, I like it. It's very informative. Uh, it is kind of short paced because we only have a front and back side on to go into the yield utility bill, but it is packed full of information. Once this all kind of gets back to normal, I would like to do a bigger newsletter and have it just go right to our Facebook page and right to our city website. So people can actually just look at it at their own leisure, but maybe make it three or four pages, go into a little bit more detail with some of this stuff. But for an insert on a water bill, I think this is absolutely spectacular. So hopefully you guys have got some good comments back on this as well. Um, I also I received a lot of questions last week regarding the 
governor's uh, uh, order, and then what businesses are considered essential or not. So I did put his amended uh, stay-at-home order, the one he did last week. It is 12 pages. It is in this packet. I wanted it to be on there for the record. But I also made a list of essential businesses, too, that I did put on the city's Facebook page. I also included that in this packet as well. Um, so if you ever need to reference that, that's why I wanted to put it in here. It's similar, very easy that you guys can find. Any questions on the uh, governor order or list of essential businesses? Mr. Nowakowski, did you have a question? About the newsletter? Go ahead. Yeah. With the one that goes in with the water bill, yes. it's going to get the most attention. Sure. And I think I had mentioned when you sent it out that <clears throat> I'd like to see us put something in there about things that citizens in town are doing so that we can lift that community work up. Sure. Like a, a citizen spotlight on Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, citizen or group spotlight, maybe? Maybe, uh, any, yeah. Any, anything anything like that? that's any kind of a community Commu service kind community of Community spotlight, so yeah. yeah. Right. Absolutely. Great idea. Good. Uh, any other questions before I move on to the city operations? Nope. Okay, so essential personnel only have, we've been doing that, I think this is the second week, third week. Uh, most of our employees are working remotely. Uh, employees overall are doing pretty well. Uh, right now, only essential functions of the city are operating, so I'm going to try to check out that and go on hold for the foreseeable future. Uh, but how it's working is our water, wastewater guys, they actually have to show up for our street crew. So they're still on that rotating schedule. The office ladies are working from home through a VPN connection. So basically, most aspects of city operations are going, and it's going very well. The citizen base, the business owner base is working very well with us. Haven't had any much of any complaints about the foyer, how we have it set up. I think the video that I did on YouTube really helped explain it out for people. But again, um, it's going pretty well. Um, I just want to know, another reader, playground equipment and the skate park is closed until further notice. Uh, today I had to go over there and retie some tape that some I guess somebody had ripped off so they could get to the slide. But just so everyone is understanding that, the actual park is open, the playground, the basketball court, the skate park, those are actually closed. Um, I had talked to you the other night about the public and the public and the public and the Did you talk to these schools? I did two different emails that said it would work. Okay. So mm -hmm. the citizen who had contacted me and asked me about it said they're still up and they're still over there. Yeah, we were after the moment of one day yesterday about it. She said she was aware of the problem. She called on Facebook and she took the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, for your at the city building, again, please use the night nice deposit box for water bills, permits, and the other documents you need to submit to the city. Uh, numerous city forms are available in the four year, including tax forms and certain permits. Please use the zoning permit for any deck shed full barn or additions. Uh, city phone lines, emails, fax lines are fully operational, but all city owned buildings are still closed to the public. Please leave a voicemail if the prompt picks up or voicemail to get to us via email. Many city employees are working from home but have access to all public means to continue to serve the public. Residents and business owners, again, we thank you so very much for working with us during these difficult times. Uh, water bill ordinance discussion. So before we get to the actual legislation, there is something on that water bill I want to council guidance on. Now the state mandated that we do not shut anyone off or recharge any connections. However, the late is still up for our future. Normally that would probably be my decision, but I want everyone to put on this. Right now, if you do not pay your bill by the due date, we put 10% penalty on it. Given what's going on, if someone doesn't pay, you're not going to shut them off, but we still charge them 10% penalty. And we say that because if we take that penalty away, would that encourage more people not to pay, or is it going to prohibit people from paying? Um, we won't be able to charge reconnect fees. That's gone. $50 fee that we will not be able to charge. But some cities I see are keeping that late pay of penalty on, and some are for nothing. So I kind of want council guidance. Is there a way we could forego it and not tell them? 
until. No, we, we probably have a pretty frank time. Right? We, we just credited Derek Turner. We don't want to do that because that's a lot of money available. So we can either go in one flight, take it off, or we can go in and keep it up. So if we go in and credit it, we will stop. But we have 2100 people. On your, on your next bill, put on there that it was done because of this. It was foregone because of this. But there's and a lot of back and forth with our software that either stays or so. For us, if it goes on there, we'd have to go and manually take it off from that type of time. Or we go and put it off. You know, so we would just it's easier just to say if you guys want to have the penalties on there or just forego it. For a short amount of time. So this order goes, supposedly, the shutoff order goes to December 1, 2020. So that's clear into December. So some of the things I've been bouncing around in my head is like, again, if, you, if we keep it on there, that's going to encourage people to continue on paying their bill. The water department needs cash flow. It needs revenue to come in to make, to make it operational. You know, the other flip side of this is if they pay late, they don't get a penalty. They don't pay again, they don't pay again, they don't pay again. And at the end of it, they have this massive three, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollar water. Because they didn't make the payments while we were not shutting people off. So that's something that we're going to keep in the back of your mind too. We're going to allow someone to get so far in the hole that now they have this massive payment arrangement. Now they have to pay on top of their current charge. Ms. Hopkins? I'm kind of in favor, not for the late fee, but I also, I know myself, I make sure I pay it by the 15th so I don't get a late fee. But if it was taken off, I don't know if if that would make me think, well, I don't have to pay it this fast. I don't know, but I just feel that the citizens have been hit so hard with everything that's been closed. And I think, I know being a realtor, we used to have to check and make sure that the water bills were paid because at one time people used to have high water bills and um, the owners would get stuck with them, the new owners. So I know people don't pay their water bills sometimes, but I'm kind of on the fence with it. Mr. Grimm, we'll just go down the line. Mr. Grimm, do you have anything to add? The average water bill is what? I don't like having to make the decision, but me personally, I'm in favor of keeping it. Um, I mean, you kind of get the reasons I was already thinking is, and what Mr. Grimm said. Ten, when you say 10%, it sounds worse than what it is. I mean, that doesn't mean that for some individuals that may be hard for them to pay. I understand that. But at the same time, you know, we have a responsibility to make sure that the water plant keeps running. And I'm, I know we don't run it off of late fees, but at the same time, um, you know, it, the budget with the water plant is so tight that I don't want to even risk putting it in a, a, a dime farther, you know, any tighter than what it is. Um, the city allows payment plans if they get behind, correct? For up to three times per year they can do it? Yeah, so the water we have to have you guys, if you're at the three max, we would allow one more to account for the time. So, so your, and it's so early in the year, we don't, we don't have anyone at the three max. But if it does come up, there is language in that to allow us to give them like one more portion of the year to help them get caught up with the Because the cash flow and the water department and the wastewater department is 
crucial. Right. It I mean, it's very it's crucial. neck and neck. It is neck and neck. And like, when you guys see that budget we do every year, it's not like we have that pot of money to get it. That pot of money is depending on people actually paying the bill based off our revenue and how much we to use. Mm -hmm. You know, so people Mr. Cook, you? As we all know, with the fact that there are more people living at home now, consequently the water and sewer usage is going to be up considerably. I personally cannot see charging the people a, let's say, an interest payment on something that they have had no control over. I would love to see something be applied to the bill with a time frame of after this situation is over with. For example, a 10 day, let's say for example, September 1 is over with. At that point, you have a 10 day grace to pay your bill and then apply the interest after that. Well, if you, the ordinance says you have 30 days once this, once we lift the emergency, then you have 30 days to contact the water department for a payment. So we have to put that back on the list. We can't call every account we have and say, hey, would you like a new, would you like a payment arrangement? So it does have to go back on the citizen base to go But yeah, we have that language in there. So after this is over, you have 30 days to contact us. And I just want people to realize that, you know, we're not charging them the $50 reconnection. We're still going to go on a payment plan with it. Um, if I had to make my decision right now, I would probably say keep the film of the on because that's going to encourage people to continue on paying. And like I said, we all should have compassion. I'm not saying we shouldn't have compassion, but at the end of the day, that's an enterprise fund. And we have to make sure it's successful. We have to make sure there's revenue stream coming. Um, so if you keep it on there, it's probably going to encourage people to pay on time. If they can't, they're not going to pay. That 10% fee is not going to make them pay or not pay if they can't afford to pay their bill. We're not going to shut them off. We're going to let it continue so as long as the state says we can. So my fear, again, is we take away that 10% penalty and then people are just going to, you know, maybe not opt to pay. I guess I'm looking at the fact that, again, this is through no fault of many of those. We are a bedroom community and the majority of our citizens are people that are probably on Social Security, have some semblance of a bank account. Would you estimate that we will have, let's say, 30% of our water, sewer, and arrears? I have no idea. We have no way to determine that. We usually don't run a lot of, of we have a lot of late payments. Like Kathy can tell on who's going to go on a payment plan within a given year. But we can't kind of use that old data because that old data is gone. It's old data. We were, that old, if, that data, if that data was basically under a stay-at-home order, then yeah, it'd be great data to use. But, you know, it's, it's just hard to gauge. I can expect our usage to go up. That's, that's a good thing. Oh, usage is going to go up dramatically. Because people are at home. Yeah. Good job. Mr. Cobb, hey, we're going to tighten the belt. We're going to be hurting for money here shortly. And I'm like Mr. Cook, I can't see put that percentage on there. You got a, right now, a million people, <laughs> over a million people file for unemployment, and the system's crashing every day. That's in the state of Ohio. I don't know what the number is here. But I know we got 50% of our residents aren't working. And to sit back here and hit them later on with the tax, with everything you want coming along here, the budget we had, you might as well throw in the trash. Because we're going to need every bit of money we, we can't get our hands on as far as keeping operation going. Right. But to sit back here and tax them or put a percentage for a delinquent, no. They can't help if they're out of a job. I mean, yeah, I agree with you. The penalty's been there. It's always been there. It's not like we're adding a new penalty. 
We'd just be suspended but, temporarily because of what's going on. But you can sit here and take when you send the bill out. You got 90 days. If it ain't paid in 90 days, you're going to be hit with a certain percentage or 60 days, however you want to do it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do it like that. It'd just be all or nothing. It'd be easier for just, I'm not, we're not going to go in there and say after 30 days, you're going to get a 5%. You might as well keep it on. If you're going to charge them in 60 days, you might as well keep it on now. Because if you're charging, say, 90 days, now you're charging the 10% penalty off three bills, which is one a month, and it's going to be the same, no matter if you charge them each month or once at the 90 day period. Yeah, but by doing this, you're going to help convince the people they need to pay this. And the bad part right now, there's no money coming in. Anything else? No. Ms. Eggleston. Receded today it was pretty good receiving. It was for today, but this is also based off last month's bill. So, um, what if we suspend it for a month and then revisit it? I think it's just doing more work. I would just either go with it or suspend it today. So that I mean, that's going to be easier for us on the administrative side of things. Um, you said it was one place in the state of Georgia. Right, but there's also more legislation since we're doing legislation tonight. I have to redraft legislation for the next meeting with our attorney involved. So when I say it's usually easier just to get it all done, because of the backlog. What about we don't make the decision tonight? We keep it the way it is, and then next meeting we decide. Because That's exactly what Mr. Jim said. Yeah. Well, if you keep it the way it is, then there's the ten percent. Right. It is time. And then revisit it so that it would affect the next one. Right. I still don't think it would be enough time to get a clear picture. I mean, because. Well, we could say we need another month again, you know, just leave it like it is. Because our water department is, you know, really important, and we don't want to start pouring money into it, you know, because. We just need to make sure there's enough revenue from the stream coming in to pay the bills we need to pay and pay the out. Right. You know, so um, I'm just going to keep it on. I mean, take it off. I mean, it sounds like council is kind of, go ahead. The, the concern I have, and I hadn't thought about it in conjunction with this, but with all of these people laid off, our anticipated revenues will be down. Oh, our income tax right. is yeah. going to take a, right. a nose it's going to take a nose off. So the days of the general fund <laughs> giving money out to these funds that need to be self-supported might be on hold for a certain amount of <clears throat> But um, we just put it to a motion if you guys want. a motion to vote. What do you guys want to do? What do you guys, what do you guys decide that? So we're, to make a, we're probably going to keep it at one meeting a month um, remotely. So I would have to call a special meeting. Um, we're trying to streamline all of our stuff to uh, account for that one meeting a month. Well, we can take a motion either way, a motion to, to continue on with 10% or a motion to drop it for X amount of time. I'll make the motion to drop it. For how long? You sure have to, you did, I mean, you might as well keep it to, to whatever the order says. Till, till he lifts the order? Do what? Um, I mean, until he lifts the... Is that December? December 1, 2020. But there are minimum guidelines that we have to do for staffing levels at the water plant. So uh, that's another thing we'll have to keep an eye on the funds. Um, I'm not going to furlough employees uh, because we've got to have that maintained level for the EPA. The general fund's not going to be in any position to help support any other fund but the general fund. Um, so, uh, but it sounds like council would pretty much just going to go away for the time being uh, from what I got from everyone. So, motion, let's, let's go for the 90 days. 
60 days. I don't care one or two. No, I'm not. The, the codes are black and white, A or B. It's either on or off. So if you guys want to keep it off, we'll just keep it off to the order, which is December 1, 2020, or until the time he left it. Because if you read the attachment I put in with it, it says December, 20, December 1, 2020, or the time he left it. Uh, so that's going to prevent us from charging the reconnect fee, the $50 reconnect fee. We cannot charge that until that order is lifted. There's no sense of confusing the public and saying we're not going to charge you the $50, but we're going to charge you a 10 percent fee during these months. Um, so if you want to follow what's kind of going on everywhere, you could make it till DeWine lifts the order and restriction on um, disconnect fees. Now what you guys can do as counselors, you can say, hey, it's gone until the order is lifted. And we'll give you the revenue expenses report. Um, I didn't give it to you this time because I want to put a target like email it to you. And you guys can watch the revenue streams and expense report in the water department. If you guys get to a point where you're uncomfortable with it, then we can revisit it. I'm going to be watching them. So if it comes to the point that I start getting uncomfortable with it, I'm going to come back and say, hey, we got to put this penalty back on. Um, but I think it's best just to keep it clean and co hot, co cohesive to the, to the citizen base and also us, you know, about just having it all line up to be different. So you just, okay. Do well. So you, you, how do you want to word it? You want to do it just, mm -hmm. well, most of it is just do it wait for 10%. <laughs> so, the, so the order is over or lift, so the expiration date of the order or so that when the governor lifts it? Yeah. Governor you get that? Lifted, uh, governor lifts, or <laughs> both. You want both those? Yeah, to the got it. to the governor lifts or the or it expires. Yep, got it. Okay. And if we do this, I would like to see in the next water bill an explanation of the fact that the income revenue is going to be down because of all of the people who had reduced incomes during this. And we run a tight, we run a tight budget. I mean, maybe that's a letter that needs to come from Mike. Uh, and well, I think we. Uh, I'm sure there would be other people who would help him write that. But you know, explain the importance of keeping up on this if you could if possibly, possibly at all keep, because it's going to come all due. Yeah. December first, right? Yeah. Or December fifteenth. You know, like I said, once it's lifted, you have 30 days to call and make a payment. So if you use an example, sir, sorry to put you on the spot, but Mr. Cook says, I'm not going to pay my water bill because I have other things i got to pay. Holy God. Say December, he comes around and he hasn't paid a water bill in four months, five months. He has a $600 water bill. You have 30 days to contact us to go on the payment plan. That's it. Once those 30 days are done, you don't contact us. We'll send you a bill for the full month. Okay, so the motion by Mr. Cobb. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion before we call for a vote? The motion is to suspend it until the uh, emergency is lifted or December 20th. Yeah, yeah. Got it. I think that's what it says. December 1. Yep, December 1, 2020. Whichever comes first. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you're ready, please. Mayor Lowry. No. Councilman Hopkins. No. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Motion passes 5-2. All right. Thank you for making that easy decision. All right. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Awesome. All right, moving on. Other city operation talking point introduced by public or city council. Basically, does anyone have any questions for me? Yeah. Yeah, I got a question for you. Sure. And I'm, this probably should be new business. But in that meeting, in that meeting three weeks ago at the health department. Okay. I talked to Sheriff Brissett, Brissett and you correct me if I'm wrong, but she had, she was talking to me saying that there's a good possibility 
the city, since we're contracted on the deputies, we may have to buy the tie back, the mask, the face shield, mm -hmm. and the gloves for our deputies. Mm -hmm. That's going to get expensive. I've never heard that. But well, that's the statement she made there. She didn't know how she was going to do it yet. Okay. If, if the county was going to pay for it, or since we've contracted the deputies, we may have to foot the bill on that. Very good point. Yes. Uh, I'll I'll, I'll look into that. I have not had any email for me uh, suggesting anything. What she say it was that we'd have to pay for the personal protection gear? Right. Pardon? The PPE, the personal yeah. protection equipment. Yeah. And she said it at that meeting that you all that you guys went to on that Saturday morning. Okay. Yeah, I have not heard anything um, about that, to be honest with you, but we'll definitely look into it. Well that's what she was talking to me about in there because she's got to give them to the deputies in case they run into it in, in somebody's residence. Sure, gotcha. Okay. The uh, that fund is is also tight because we added that fifth deputy, so we'll definitely see how that goes. Um, because we have we, we have to protect the deputy. That's that's a given. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask another question here too. Yes. We're under contract with five deputies, correct? Plus a cruiser. Yeah. Do we still want to go with the fifth one right now with the way the money's going to be? I know, but I'm just saying, money's going to come to crunch. I can't make that call. But, I mean, you're looking at a deputy. Maybe for 120000 depending on what kind of insurance plan they got. Yeah. Plus the 12000 for the car, if you guys leave. Um, now that's something you guys want to look at. We'll have to go back and look at the contract and the terms when you want to amend it. Stuff you got to take, but well, I mean, I hate to, I hate to lose that fifth deputy, but with everything that's going on, we're going to be hurt for money. Well, here's the thing. You know, I agree with you. I think we're going to take a dip in our income tax collection. I mean, that's pretty apparent. You know what that's going to be at this point in time? Uh, we're not. I'm not sure. Um, state told us to look at 20 percent. Um, that doesn't work for everyone. Some people receive property tax or income to be impacted much by this. Some people receive income tax. Our police, as we know, is 0.5 of our income tax. So we can see a dip in that. We, we can. Thing with that is income tax collections. We'll probably know in about maybe two months, three months, how CCA is going to start receiving us. So we'll have a better idea. So maybe we hold off on that one for about 30 days. See see what we collect from CCA in the coming weeks, and then make that determination because I wasn't ready to bring it up to you guys yet. I wanted to wait a month, but I had something I was going to bring forth. To well, I'd like say I, I had asked the question about that because she made mention to it in there at that health meeting. And her main concern were how to handle the deals in the, in the jail. I said, if I'm concerned, let them all have it. Yeah. You know, but we've got to protect these gentlemen out here that are that are out here helping us. Yeah, we do. And I, the other flip side of that is is since more people are home, we're going to do that the deputy more because there's more people out. And now that springtime is turning into summer, people are getting cabin fever. They're already out doing things now. They do. so there's a it's a balancing act. It truly is. And I, I like where your head's at. Can I ask the chief a question? Sure. How are you set on? Face shields, masks, gloves, high Well, that's what I'm saying. We got to protect you people, both sides. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're fine, and we probably also talk about that we're going to be able to get some of the most important things. Because if you all go down, I don't know what's going to happen. Then. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Anyone else for Mr. Bridge before we move on?
All right. Mr. Bridge, you good? Yes, I am. Thank you, guys. Appreciate the time. And thank you, sir, for everything. All right. Let's see. So, let's see. Let me get back to the top here. Some measure report coming from members of the public. Mr. Dewey, do you have anything? <coughs> have anything you want to say? Do you have any comments? I think we all got comments. You happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Committee reports done tonight. Moving on to resolutions, please, Ms. Burner. All right, resolution 2020-06, amending the rules of council during the current national state of emergency. Council, make the motion to accept. Second. Uh, one second, sorry, guys. Um, are you guys still wanting to do the one meeting a month remotely? I think so. Yes. Okay, can I have a motion? So a motion to amend 2020-06? To allow for one meeting a month before the I didn't know how you guys were going to do that. So move. Second. Motion. First. Second. Second. Okay. To amend, as okay. Mr. Bridge explained. So it's going to say to allow, to allow section one, um, city council will meet on first. Until further notice. And at the last meeting, you guys suspended your work session until further notice. Thank you. Yep. Council and discussion. Anna, did you get that? Yep, you get got that? it. When you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right, we're voting on the amendment. Um, Council McCobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm? No. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Motion passes six to one. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Section two, the last paragraph, these uh, online meetings. If questions or comments from the public are received, and city council shall spend no more than ten minutes addressing such questions and or comments before proceeding to the rest of the agenda. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything that we have to do that's more important than, than hearing. Mm -hmm. I would move really to strike the last paragraph, the last sentence on the second page. Oh, that is up to you guys if you would like to do so. Anybody? I will mention, um, since we'll be doing the emails, um, kind of be hard to please that. If we start the meeting at 7, someone should email at 7, that's great. So you put it in, you pass the public comment section on it, you get a bombardment of emails. Uh, most cities put a time limit on it. Uh, some cities said we're not doing it at all. On summer, didn't you say someone's doing no meeting or none, it's meetings accepted prior to the meeting? Springfield, I think, is good, yeah. If you have any questions for that, you got it. But they're doing it because if people are calling in, a lot of these people are doing it like Facebook comments. Ours is a little different than doing email, but people who are Facebook living it, it's accessibility of someone to put in some of the questions, it may take up a long time because some people are watching it. Um, so some cities are limiting it, some people are taking it out, but clearly that is up to you guys to do your meeting. Um, it, we'll have an email address, not a address. And I, what I would add to it is Mr. Grimm is also, I mean, you know, for example, we have our rules already that, you know, when they talk, it's five minutes. You know, if someone's up there honestly making valid conversation, they go over to five minutes all the time. So, I mean, as long as it's not, I mean, my opinion, as long as it's not getting carried away where they're asking, you know, just really silly questions. Uh, and dre to a to a a Do what? Oh, ma okay. Uh, so it leaves it open, kind of. It leaves it open to meet Mr. Graham halfway. Someone may have a valid point that we don't want to get over, that we do need to discuss. 
and that's what I'm, that's what I was saying is if, if there if someone's shooting an email with a very valid question or comment, then yeah, we'll go past the you know the, the, the time said. But if you, does that work for you? And Max? I, would, I would think that if if somebody's watching it and actually participating, trying to participate in what's going on, you know, even after the three minutes you know, whatever it was there to limit the email. Yeah. Just don't limit it until the end of the discussion. And then that's it. It's up to you guys. Well, if we change it to May spend no more than 10 minutes in that meeting. Okay, so does anybody here, let's just, does anybody want to make a motion to change or amend the said ordinance before we move forward with this? Okay, was your a second? Huh? Did you say something? Um, Did you second it? Okay, I didn't hear you. Uh, I, I can't hear what they're saying down okay. there. <laughs> no problem, I just want to make sure I heard. Does he know what he means? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, he's the second to Dale's amendment. Yeah, does he know that he, that's what he's... Do you know what you, do you know what you seconded? Huh? You know what you seconded? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I can so. say you can't. The last, last sentence off of section two. He wants to change the last section to where it, it eliminates the time limit on public comment in future meetings. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Any other discussion on it, Council? When you're ready, Ms. Brown. Okay, Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. No. Councilman Hopkins. No. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Alkowski. Yes. Councilman. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. All right, you guys ready for long meetings? Pass. It comes down to it. That's what we're here for. That's why we they pay us with eight bucks. And it's only one month. Oh, now. All right, moving on to. Uh, yeah. Now we have to still vote on the. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. So you're going to put no time limit on it whatsoever. Yeah. None. Yeah, there's no time limit on it now. Okay. So. okay. What was the vote on that, Emily? Six one. Uh huh. Five two. Five two. Five two. What is it? Five two. Two no's. Two no's. Oh, yep. I counted wrong. Sorry. Thank you. Well, why don't we go back the way it was? Because well, we just <laughs> we can't. Oh, I mean five minutes a piece is what I meant. You know the way we always. Well, that's still in there. What we were doing oh. that is is setting the it was the time of how long we will allow comments. So like if we oh. waited. We allow three minutes for an email to come in and then discuss it. That's going to be five or six minutes. So why do you think it all comes in after the public comment section? Afterwards? Yeah. So the public comment, I mean, say... After the first three minutes. No, after... After the public comment, same as if somebody wants to say something in here. The mayor's discussion. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, cross that bridge when it gets here, sir. Okay. All right, so now. Now we're voting on. Can, the, I, can you give me a second? Just make sure there's no ripple effect on that before we go on. Sure, take all the time you need. But not all the time. You got 9.5. There's nothing in the remote meeting about time limits. Thank you. All right. Okay, so. Doesn't Zoom have a 40 minute time? No, not the one we have to define. Mm -hmm. So 
So now... I had a first from Cobb for the original correct. resolution. And now I did not hear a second. Uh, who seconded his the original motion? Mr. Cook? Okay. Okay. Right, when you're ready. Cook was a second on that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Mayor Lowry. No. Councilwoman Hopkins. What are we voting on? Now we're voting on. Right. Oh. Right. The resolution what? So the. The new resolution that's been changed with the. One yeah, meeting a month and then no women on the public comment. Right. I thought we just voted on that. No, we voted on. We, we voted to amend to add the amendment to it. So now we're voting on the new creation of the, of the whole, the okay. new final draft. Okay, no. Okay. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. That motion passes five to two. And that, folks, is why there's seven of us. <laughs> All right, moving on, Ms. Burner, when you're ready, right. please. Take your time. Moving on, Ordinance 2020-14E, an ordinance declaring certain emergency procedures necessary for the continued governance of the city during the current national state of emergency and declaring a state of emergency. Council. So moved. Cook, and then Ms. Cook, Graham. Right. Uh, this ordinance, this will allow you guys uh, to council, excuse me, to meet remotely with the technology that Casey and I have been working on uh, last week, and that will be Zoom. Um, but if something doesn't happen, we do have that catch-all that says other similar type of software. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions before the vote? Discussion? Ms. Marno, when you're ready, please. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. That motion passes 7 0. And the next one, Ordinance 2020-15E, an ordinance suspending certain sections of the codified ordinances of the City of New Carlisle in order to comply with Emergency Order DDAGW 2020-01D, issued by the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency and declaring an emergency. Can I say something, Mr. Mayor? You sure can. Uh, in anticipation, because uh, I know everyone very well, this one already says we are discontinuing the 10% fee, so we don't need to amend it. Okay. Okay. Council? So moved. Second. Cook, Tom. Cook, Tom. Cook, Tom. Cook, Tom. Cook, Tom. Cook, Tom. You know which is which? I do, Tom. Cook. You forgot our signs again. <laughs> he sure did. I'm looking at the signs. Any discussion? When you're ready, please. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. That Pleasure. Motion passes 7 to 0. <laughs> Thank you very much. And moving on, other business. None before we adjourn. I just wanted to uh, say to Mr. Bridge, uh, thank you for all your hard work, the administration's work. Uh, councils, you know, obviously no one can plan for anything like this. You can always try, but it's never going to be perfect. And I, you know, for what we have to work with and our finances, I think you guys have done an excellent job. So thank you, and please pass that on to all the, you know, all your workers and admins. Thank you so much for the time. We appreciate it. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Since council voted on it, and I have to bring it back to council, I want to make a motion to cancel the fireworks. Second. We don't even know if this is gonna be over by then. Um, so we're not opening the pool, are we? We don't know that, we don't know. Um, 
What's that? I don't. I mean, I don't know, but I. I mean, my opinion is it's just the money's and my two cents is the money's sitting there. It's not being spent. So if we don't do it, we don't do it. It's not going to hurt anything. I wouldn't. I mean, this. I'm not saying it would be over in two, three weeks, but I would say if this was over, let's say even in a month, I don't see why we couldn't be fired. Well, the only difference is if this thing is not over and we sign a contract, we could be liable for the money and not get a show. When is there a deadline to sign that contract? Pardon? Is there a deadline to sign the contract? Uh, that contract is under the city manager now for spend, so I could execute it myself. Mm -hmm. um, but I would not execute that contract without consulting you guys first for this particular mm -hmm. um, The money is allocated in the budget, so I right. talked with him about it today. Uh, the, um, as long as we don't execute the agreement, we're fine. And I don't even have an agreement yet, nor a date or anything like that. Um, the ordinance has been passed, so it doesn't mean I have to spend the money. Um, but this particular thing, like I just said, I would probably, before I sign that contract, come to you guys at that point in time to see where your guys' head was at with that. Well, that, that contract, or the, the motion for that was 17 five for the problem. Yeah. So twenty thousand is the limit I got. Yeah. So um, I love where your head is at with your cost savings measures. I truly do, and I respect that a hundred percent. But I'm think I'm with Mr. Grimm on this. I think we're just maybe a month and a half, two months too early to make that call. And I think if we see our revenue dips, then I'm right there with you. That that is one of the first things that we need to go and get rid of. But we are not signed up for anything at this point. Like I have not we just reviewed a contract. I have not done anything. Um, I'd hate to see us be liable for it and not have fireworks. That's my biggest. Thing. Well, I'd have to go through the contract with you and sign off on the agreement. Yeah. 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 Okay. You're going. You're going to have to sign the contract here shortly to make sure we can book them. Hmm. Yes, sir. Here's the thought. I would say, whether it's you or one of us, whichever you prefer, uh, someone call them and say, when's the latest we can sign our contract? Knowing what our dates are going to be, when, when's the latest? Because let's say it does end sooner than what, you know, what, I would hate for it to end. We still have the money to do it. I mean, that would be a big, let's get out of our houses finally and see fireworks mm -hmm. if that time comes. Yeah, well, I mean, like you said, though, like if we sign up for a June, a June event or July 4th event and we're still under that lockdown order. Right. But what now, I'm, another thing that we could do is start to interrupt you, sir. So very sorry. Is we can write the contract for an hour. You know, maybe we get the contract negotiation started, you know, but it says, hey, if we're still under the lockdown order for this, then, you know, we get we get our money back. Knowing what I know, learned a lot from this fire con they buy everything in advance. So I think once they buy it we might be responsible for it. Um, so, yeah, that's another tough call. But I still think, all due respect, I think maybe another month, month and a half when we see the CCA collections come in, because I'd hate for you guys to take it off now. We have to remand, may have to remand, no, we won't have to remand the budget. You just wouldn't spend it. You just wouldn't spend it. It'd still would, be there. You know, um, but let me, let me make some phone calls with that, and then we'll pick it back up. Is that okay? We do it, look at it next meeting. There's no sense. Hey, um, Mr. Sagos, or Mr. Nokowski, I'm sorry. Mr. Cook. I guess I'm looking at the budget. Knowing full well we're going to take a terrific hit here. We've already been through one month of which we're going to have a very large, quote unquote, shortfall in our revenue. This will probably go into another 30 days at least. <clears throat> so now we've got two months. You know, if even if we cut that down to five or six thousand dollars per show, we're going to probably need that money somewhere else in this budget. There is no contract executed. I think your I think your head's in the right spot. What about Memorial Day walk? That's going to come up well before the fireworks. We need to figure out what we're going to do for Memorial Day walk parade. Not to change subjects, but that's what popped in my head when I'm talking about fireworks. I'm thinking there's something else going on. You know, other cities may be cutting it too. Um, 
I mean, the budget's been approved for the 17-5. It's not going to happen unless I sign a contract with it. So I can make some phone calls when we're in the next couple weeks, find out, you know, when is the recommended last time to sign the contract. Um, push comes to shove, we'll have to suspend for the year. And citizens should understand that. Well, I know the way the contract read last time, we were liable for half of the amount if we can. Yeah, but that was with American. I'm going to look at Rosie, too. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Anything else? Other business before you go? Um, did he withdraw his motion? Oh, yes, he had a motion. I think. Mm -hmm. So, did anybody, anyone? I second it, but I don't want to now. <laughs> so, now what do we do? Can we can withdraw I'll withdraw my second. It? She, but I didn't she, she withdrew her, her okay. second. Does anyone else want to second? Anybody else want to second it? Side on it? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. And we've already discussed it, so we'll just go to a vote. <laughs> when you're ready. All right. Uh, Mayor Lowry. No. Councilwoman Hopkins. No. Councilman Grimm. No. Councilwoman Nowakowski? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? No. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. That motion fails. Right. Five, two to five. Thank you. And Ms. Nowakowski, did you have something before we go? You had something. Well, I bet we'll have another meeting next month. <laughs> Might have one before that. That's true. <laughs> All right. Anything else? One other thing. Sir? Did you, did you hear the governor today all public schools are, are closed? He was not in here. Okay. All right. Does that, does that tie in with his, does it tie in with his September 1 or whatever? Right now, everything's under the emergency act, and the pools are closed <coughs> until this thing is over. That should be easy because we're not open yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a first or a second for these? What's that? I didn't hear. Did somebody adjourn? No, no not okay. yet. So now, anything else? Motion to adjourn. First. Second. Second by Ms. Hopkins. And a vote. Councilman Grimm. Yes. yes. Councilman Alkowski. Yes. yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes.